What's going on guys? I'm Viper, or Zach, whatever you want to call me, and today is episode 7 of Tips and Tricks, and I apologize again why I haven't been uploading so much. It's a long story, uh, but anyway, I want to thank you all so much um, for the people that voted uh, in my previous video, the little shout out um, <clears throat> that I gave to my friends, and I had you guys go in the description and uh, vote for them. I really appreciate it if you guys did that, because in fact, they... Um, they actually got the gig, and they got to go uh, at one of our local theaters, and they performed, and it was sick. It was like a nice concert. They opened up for uh, this other DJ, and it was so live. It was awesome. Anyway, uh, I had a really good time, and I assume so did they. So I just want to thank you guys because you guys were the ones that made it possible. Um, so without like stalling anything, uh, this um, Tips and Tricks is going to be revolving around color correction and the use of magic bullet looks um, within After Effects. So uh, we can go ahead and get started. Um, <clears throat> I use CS6, so I, I think it should be the same thing if you're using a different Adobe. Um, but yeah, the uh, magic bullet looks is all the same. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to import a in previous intro that I've used before so we can kind of get a feel for um, like an example of what you guys might, something similar you guys might use. So actually I'm going to go ahead and use this Aeon intro and I think I've got, which one is which? Which one is more? I think this is it. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and just let it be uh, unmatted. Alright, so we're going to put it in here and I think this is it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. So uh, right off the bat we've got a nice uh, material. So we do, and for a lot of um, color corrections that I usually do, I make everything really shiny and pop out. So we can easily achieve this. So uh, what I usually do in After Effects is before anything, I just go ahead and create a solid. And uh, make sure it's all the way black. And make sure to put it underneath <clears throat> the intro layer. Uh, from there, just make another uh, adjustment layer and add magic bullet looks. So pretty self-explanatory. Um, once we get into the whole Magic Bullet Looks program, that's when stuff will get a little more complicated. But um, I'm, I think in some of my tutorials, I've gone over how to do this. Um, but a lot of you guys personally have been asking me uh, the exact steps on what I do. So I'll just make a whole tutorial for it. Um, and I also have another tutorial in my Motionology pack that goes over some of this too. So for the people that didn't get that, you'll be able to see it right here. Um, <clears throat> What we're gonna do is I usually start off with a contrast just to bump out, uh, bump up the whites and darken the blacks, uh, which is really cool. So that's really nice. And actually, I'll probably make it a little less because we're gonna add some curves and some uh, other things to bump up the whites and darken the blacks. So uh, that's that's always good to start off with. I always like exposure too. <clears throat> it makes everything a little brighter. Um, and we can actually go back to the contrast since we use the exposure and just bump it down a little bit. I mean, bump it up a little more. So around three, that's what my point three is what I'm using. Uh, we can also go to subject and also grab a curves, drag it on there, and I accidentally did it to camera, but really I don't see the difference. So if any of you want to tell me what's the difference, feel free, but it's all really the same thing. So I use the basic curve, which is just bumping up the whites lowering the black so it's really just a contrast again <clears throat> and you can really tell if uh, we zoom in here you can start to see this accented line which is really nice and looks very good in intros and really anything too anything metallic which is what we're dealing with which is perfect um, <clears throat> so really that's that's really it from here um, in matte there's a bunch of things I use uh, and the secret thing that I use that a lot of you probably have been wondering, how do you get that like sparkly glow? It's this, it's star filter. And you already see the flares on here look awesome. Uh, you can bump up the size. I usually keep it down to around like five. Um, <clears throat> and then the boost, you can control how bright it is. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes you can you can mess around with the color. I like to keep it at around uh, just right in the, right in the center white. And then you can mess with the angle as well, um, and that would be really cool to animate, but um, unfortunately I don't know how to do that. So I just keep it at around 45, and I'm just going to reset it. Okay, so from here that's really it, and you can't tell that it has a lot of star filter on this frame. Now, I think in a different frame you might be able to, but for now that's fine. 
Um, I always use a light flex, and I make it around a whitish blue color, depending on the color of the intro. Something around there, and I'll take it and make it around negative six, somewhere close to that. And then I also, have, I also always add a diffusion, which just softens everything up um, and kind of adds a little glow. Um, so if you see, you can kind of see it like move. Um, the the smaller the size, it's going to be the closer it is to the, uh, the actual logo and your objects. And if you, uh, I always bump the grade up to six, and the glow you can make as much as you want, but uh, really, it's uh, it's really up to you, and it's all trial and error what looks good so I mean you can always do it manually and I mean if you see the uh, the changes you can kinda see the glow oh it's darker now and now if we add the glow it's a little it's glowing a little more um that's fine and I always do like just a custom made one as well as I use this cool fog which really makes it look good and uh, you can already kinda tell it's kinda diffusing a lot of things so go back to your exposure and bump it up and now you'll see that it's kind of popping out, and you'll see the uh, the star filter start to come in and do its work, which is really cool. So if we kind of like just take off everything and start from the beginning, you can see how much of a change this has done just by adding curves, diffusion, light, and the star filter, which is unbelievably amazing, and then adding that exposure, which is really nice. So all of it works together, and you can start in any step, and it's always gonna you're always gonna go back and change something, change something. So uh, starting wherever is fine. Um, really, that's about it. Oh, and lens, I always add a vignette just so uh, it focuses more on the center of the, the um, <coughs> of your frame, and um, I always add an edge softness as well, which kind of gives it more focus in the center of the frame as well, which is really nice. And I. I try to get it so it's just on the outside, so it's really not touching this middle part. So really, it's up to you. You can mess around with that. Um, occasionally, I will use anamorphic flare, but right now, I don't think it's the best time for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Um, and yeah, so we've got this really realistic glow um, that looks really nice. And it kind of just looks like it's got its own atmosphere just from this. So... Um, we can also, you know, we can mess around with some of the uh, the coloring as well. Like if we get a, uh, excuse me, um, if we get, uh, what's, I think it's the um, three-strip process? I'm not exactly sure. That's going to bump up a lot. Okay. Yeah, that's not it. Excuse me. It's, um, it has to do something with color. Uh, let me find it, and I'll be right back. This is embarrassing. I'll be right back. One sec. So I went ahead and added um, color ranges and range saturation. So we'll start with color ranges first. And right here, um, I'm going to try to make it so the highlight is um, white. And then from here, the mid-tones will make it a little more blue so it's kind of a cooler feel to it. And then the shadow, we can mess around with this as well, but I'd like to go blue again as well. So just moving it over to the blue side. So now we've got this blue tint, which looks really nice. And then saturation here. Um, we can mess with some of this, but again, moving it over to the blue looks really good. Messing around with some of the highlights, that's way too much, so we don't want too much, but uh, that's looking decent. Um, and this is going to really, if we, would, if we don't want any saturation, we can just take it all out here, and we'd get kind of like a vintage feel, but I, I kind of want to give it a more realistic effect, and have it look blue. So this is looking really good and you can kinda see there's a, a very minimal change here but this is gonna add our our color which is really nice. So now that was probably a total of uh, three, six, nine, so a total of eleven different um, effects which is really cool. Um, and if we had finished we're gonna automatically see the change um, <clears throat> and without this black solid you'll see what I'm talking about it looks cut out and since uh, if you render an after um, in cinema 4d as um, what's it called as alpha channel it's going to make sure everything is like everything that is black is going to be it's gonna mask everything out so without having this black solid there it's gonna look a little weird so keep that there and I do that before everything so um Let's let's check some, and I always uh, go into different frames just to make sure it's looking good. And now we can kind of see we've got that blue, and we've got the uh, 
the gold, which is looking really cool. And, um, and we can start to see the overexposure um, on the reflection, which is, um, in photography, it's usually not a good thing, but uh, in motion, I think it you can express it any way you want, and I think it looks really cool to kind of give it like a flash, and you can see that there's a lot more light exposed on that. So, um, yeah, this is looking really cool, very shiny, very bright. A lot of you have been asking me how I did it, and yeah, that's my little trick. So, um... I'm sorry if this was short. I mean, it's it was 10 minutes. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, again, I apologize why I haven't been uploading so much over spring break because this week is spring break. I'll try to lengthen um, my tutorials, maybe do a few more, and maybe even upload an intro. So I'll see what I can do. Leave a comment um, down in the comment section what you want to see from me, if you want a new uh, series, anything like that. So, yeah, uh, I look forward to making another video. So, yeah, see you guys. Peace.